Hi guys, welcome back to the fourth video in our tutorial series on Apache Cassandra. In this video, we're going to look at installing Apache Cassandra on a Linux machine. In this case, we're using Ubuntu desktop, which is running on a virtual machine inside Windows, but the process should be the same for most Linux based operating systems. The Apache Cassandra runs very easily and very well on Linux machines, so this would be the preferred way of installing it if you're able to run a virtual machine or perhaps a machine on one of the cloud providers platforms. So the first thing we need to do is open a terminal window. Once we have the terminal window opened, we need to start by installing the Java runtime environment. This is what Cassandra runs on. We could also install the Java development kit, which would be useful if we wanted to update Cassandra's source code and recompile. But in this case, the JRE or Java runtime environment is fine. And we're going to use the open JRE in this case. So in order to install that, we simply need to type sudo apt install open JDK. And if you press tab twice, you should get autocomplete 8 JRE and then headless. And we can click enter. We have to give our password because we use sudo. Enter our password and it should start installing the package. Click yes to do we want to continue? And this should kick off the installation of our package, which should be relatively quick, but will take some amount of time. So now that the download is finished, we want to add the command alias to where we install the JRE to our operating system. So in order to do this, we need to change directory to the default location of where it's installed, which is cd us or slash lib slash jvvm slash java dash eight and then tab should autocomplete and we can click enter and if we type pwd it will give us the exact location of where we installed the java runtime environment so what we want to do is copy this so select it right click copy and then we want to add this as the java home to our bash or c file so in order to do that we type sudo nano tilde slash dot bash or c and that basically saying we want to edit bash or C with the nano text editor. We could also use other popular text editors like VI. I like to use nano. So just press enter on that and it should bring us into our file. We want to navigate to the bottom of the file. And at the bottom of the file, we simply want to add Java underscore home equals. And then we want to copy in the location of our file. So right click and paste, and it should copy in where we installed the Java runtime environment. And in order to save that, we just click control S or command S on Mac, and then control X or command X to leave. And that should be saved now. So once we've edited our basher C, we need to reopen a new terminal window for the changes to take effect. So we've reopened our terminal window. And in order to ensure that the Java home command alias has been set correctly, we simply type echo and then dollar sign Java home, Java home. And that should return the location of the Java runtime environment where we said earlier. And as you can see, it does. So before we can install Cassandra, there's one more package we need to install. It's the curl package. So it's quite simple to do this. We just do sudo apt install curl. And then again, we have to give it the password because we use sudo. And do we want to continue? Click yes. So this should install the curl package. So now we're ready to start installing Cassandra. And in this case, we're going to use the Debian packages to install it. What we need to do is open a web browser and go to the Cassandra getting started guide. And this gives some installation instructions for installing Cassandra from the Debian packages. The first thing we want to do is copy this line here, which adds the Apache repository of Cassandra to our operating system. So we want to copy that and we want to paste it into our command terminal. And the one thing we want to change is we want to change it to version 3.9 because that's the latest version and that's going to be compatible with the version of Python we already have installed on in our machine. So simply change that to 3.9 and press enter. That should add the package repository. So then we want to add the Apache repository keys. So what we can do is copy this entire line here into our terminal window. As you can see, we've already installed curl, so they should run fine. And it does. So now we've added the package repository and we've added the necessary keys. 
So next thing we need to do is update our repository so we're able to pull in that Cassandra is available. And this should take a couple of seconds to run. So now that has finished, we're ready to install Cassandra from the Debian packages. All that we need to do that is run sudo apt-get install Cassandra. So we can copy that and again, paste it into our terminal just the way it is, and that should automatically install Cassandra version 3.9. Again, we wanna click yes to the prompt or Y. Now that the Cassandra download is finished, we can start the Cassandra service by typing sudo service Cassandra start and that should start our Cassandra service in the background. We can check the status of the service by typing sudo service Cassandra status and this says it's active and running which is a good sign. We can press control C to get out of that and we can stop the service by running sudo service Cassandra stop and that should stop the service. So again if we check the status it should be down And as we expected, the service is inactive. So obviously we want to start the service for this tutorial, so we'll restart it. In order to check the health of our Cassandra cluster, we can simply type node tool status, and that should give us all the information or an overview of the information we need to ensure our cluster is running correctly. In this case, our cluster is just one machine, so only one machine should appear here. So we can see here that we've called the data center that we've given our Cassandra to run in, which the default name is data center one. And then this gives us some information on the status of our machine. So the status can either be up or down. In our case, you can see there's a U here, which means our status of our machine is up and the state can be normal, leaving, joining or moving in the cluster. In our case, it's normal. And we also get some additional information about the IP address of our machine, how many tokens are assigned to the ring, which we'll look at in the next video how much of the data this machine owns, and also the name of the rack, which is configurable through settings. We can configure different machines to be on different racks. In order to interact with the Cassandra cluster, we use a tool called CQLSH. And in order to use that, we need to ensure we have Python installed. In order to check that you have Python installed, simply type Python dash dash version. And you can see here at the moment, we're running Python 2.7.15 which should be fine for Cassandra 3.9. So we should be able to run CQLSH with no problems. So once we run CQLSH, we can begin giving Cassandra queries using Cassandra query language. And we also get some information here about what version of Cassandra we're running. One important thing to note is if we're running a lower version or an older version of Cassandra, say Cassandra 3.5 or 3.6, it won't work with Python 2.7.15 it has to be a version of Python that is less than 2.7.11, I believe. In order to avoid that, ensure you run Cassandra 3.9 like we did at the start of the tutorial. In the next video, we'll start to look at how data is stored in Cassandra and how Cassandra decides what nodes or what machines on our cluster will get what data. Thanks for watching the videos, guys. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to leave a comment in the comment section. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel.